Uh, my name is Nicholas Clifford. This is a 1959 vinyl recorder. They're originally made from the 1920s, 30s, but it's pretty similar uh, design to the 1920s and 30s ones. And they're used for, you can record sound live and make a vinyl or plastic record straight uh, from the sound going straight to disc that you can take away. And that's what we're doing here today. We're doing live recordings um, uh, of people come, can come along and record their voices, uh, I'll call them uh, doing talking or singing a song or making, sing, selling a poem. This is a plastic seven inch uh, disc we're making today, 45 speed, uh, like a, the old seven inch singles. Uh, which we put on here. It's see-through, but you can obviously get them in black as well, traditionally. Uh, which we uh, can put on, and then we can set the machine going round. We can put on a hot lamp to get the plastic a little bit softer, so it's ready to cut. And then with this here is the is the cutter head that cuts the groove in the record as it goes round and the sound coming in from who's ever recording goes into the machine to the head causing vibrations in the magnetic coil in the top of the head uh, embossing the sound into the record. Each, each of these are called lathe cut discs so they're not masters they're individual unique discs every single one. These are individual recordings each one unique um, Obviously, when magnetic tape came in uh, in the 60s, um, they, these became less popular. I bought this um, a year ago. I've been looking for a year before then to find one, as I love the technology and uh, uh, I'd like to bring it back. And also, there is an increased interest at the moment in vinyl records. This is a one-off vinyl record. It's not a master record. It's a one-off that you would do at the live performance of a 50s pop group, a 50s event. In the, 19, in the 1950s, uh, the, these, this was used to create master lacquer discs, uh, or lacquer discs, um, uh, but now people seem very popular to call, record straight to plastic as individual lathe cut discs. Who is bringing them back into popularity? Who would be crazy enough to want to tow that around the place? You couldn't get it into a cinema or a theatre or an event, could you? No, these are very heavy and impractical to take around for recording. I can imagine in the 1920s when the BBC commissioned 20 of them to be made, um, you can imagine um, them carrying these around to places to record sound would be very, very heavy compared to a light uh, recorder that people would use today. But they were very, very workable. They worked, didn't they? Yes, they were very, they were very reliable. Uh, so even with a few knocks and stuff, it still works. It's very solid, made very solidly. Plate glass negatives are brilliant because you can have so much information on a plate glass photograph that you can't even really have on a, on a modern ca digital camera. Is the equivalent the same? Are they more sensitive to sound or, or cut out extraneous sound? Are they comparatively better than anything that can be recorded today. Good as they were then, modern technology is often can produce better quality recordings. Even with digital, the um, you can hear often hear a lot more. But there's a certain lovely quality you get to these records, uh, authentic sound. This is why people are going back to vinyl because there's a sort of a crazy atmosphere on vinyl. It's it's not perfect. People like the more tactile nature of the vinyl record. It's something physical you can hold and read. It's something you can collect compared to the MP3s that are getting lost and also have, seem to have no value as uh, they get passed around for free. This is something you can own and collect. And sell. And sell, yeah. And how long have you owned it? I, I have owned it for a year now. 
uh, and I, when I bought it, it needed a lot of work doing it, so I kind of bought parts for it and rewound the magnetic coil inside and uh, got it back up working again. So it's born again? Born again, yes. As a hobby? Uh, definitely use it for hobby, uh, recording our own music and our friends' music and recording in these events like this, recording live. So you've been on the road, touting it around, drawing gasps of wonder. What do you actually do? You have people recording their own voices, their own unique voices? Yes, we've had um, people, uh, we've had come to these events and we've recorded live onto record. Uh, people recording poems and or um, children singing songs as messages to um, grandparents and things like that. Or we've had young performers coming and recording some songs that they've written. And we've had a lovely response so far from it and lots of enthusiasm. Are you unique? Are you the only people touring the country and trying to promote such a machine? Not sure. I'm not sure about that. Um, I think there are people doing it. A lot of people do lay, have it set up at home, so people send MP3s. Have you made any really unique recordings of anybody really interesting with it, or is it just a, a fun machine? We've come across some uh, people, surprisingly, some great singers and some great poets recording uh, onto the record. You know, of course, the anniversary of the birth of British Broadcasting is coming up in 2020 and 2022. I'd certainly want you there when we played the Name Nanny Melba yeah. and have you record a little bit of the broadcast celebrating the 100 years. Yeah, Are you up for that? Yes. I'd love to be here and part of that. So, How much would it have cost back then, equivalent to today's prices? I have no idea. I have no idea. Have How much did you pay for it? I paid £400. And then fixed it. And fixed it, yes. Why do you know how to fix it? Are you a sound engineer or recorder? No, there's a forum called lathetrolls.com with lots of people with help. If you're ever interested in getting into this, advice on how to fix and uh, where to buy them from. Hi, I'm Dominique, and I also um, do the record lathe with Nick. And um, this is the booth of truth, and it is a previous toilet tent. <laughs> Um, reconditioned, hand stitched, and um, people can come in here and sit down and do their recordings. Um, some people prefer not to sit in here, but it's if you're feeling quite shy about it, we can zip you up. There you go, you've got anonymity. And you put a microphone under there somewhere, do you? There's a microphone in here as right. well. We have to sit you down because it's unfortunately it's not that tall. We've got a mic in there and a little chair for you to sit on for your comfort. And we've taken this to festivals, so we've been outside with it, and that's why we've got the, got the tent. What are we talking about, V Festival? We went to the Village Green Festival in Chelmsford, and that's where we met Tim, and he invited us to come to Sanford Mills today, so we're here. And it's very nice to be here.